The ICJ ruling that Israel was plausibly committing genocide was uncomfortable for the West. It was uncomfortable because by arming and diplomatically supporting Israel's assault on the Gaza Strip, politicians across the West had made themselves complicit in everything Israel was doing. It just so happens then that as soon as the ICJ story broke, another story broke immediately afterwards that apparently 12 employees of the aid and relief organization UN RWA, the largest operating in Gaza, had been involved in the October the 7th offensive. Almost immediately afterwards, the US State Department revealed that it was planning to suspend all financial aid to the UN WRA. But let's take a closer look at this story. Firstly, as we have said, the timing of this story cannot be ignored. As soon as the story dropped, instead of the West's plausible involvement in genocide, being on the front pages everywhere, the ICJ case began to fade into the background and was quickly replaced by the UN RWA Hamas story. As media critic Sana Saeed pointed out, within an hour of the State Department announcing it was cutting funding, the main news story in the US became about the UN RWA and not the ICJ case. But since the State Department had it that the UN RWA employees only may have been involved. Where is the story actually coming from? According to an Axios report, the accusations come from the Shin Bet, Israel's security agency and the IDF, based on interrogations they allegedly carried out on Hamas fighters following the October the 7th attacks. Now surely we have to pause here for a moment. We have to click the pause button here. The IDF who have been caught lying multiple times now conveniently appear with this story on the day that the ICJ rules that they are plausibly committing genocide. What's going on here? This is not to mention that the Shin Bet has been involved before in the torture of interrogation suspects as Amnesty International recorded in 2019. What incentive might Israel have though to get rid of the UN RWA? The reality is that Israel have long viewed the UN RWA as an inconvenience the Israeli Foreign Ministry had put together a report last month to get rid of the organization for the long term. The UNRWA provides aid to Palestinians and frankly seems to be an inconvenience for those Israelis that would love to see the Palestinians displaced. A Knesset member said publicly that getting rid of the UNRWA was in her mind crucial to winning the war. What does getting rid of a humanitarian aid organization have to do with winning the war unless your aim is to ethnically cleanse and forcefully displace people. Our main goal in the war is to eliminate the threat, not just neutralize it. We know how to eliminate terrorists, but it's harder with an idea. UNRWA represents that idea, breeding more terrorists through various means. We cannot win this war without dismantling UNRWA. But let's assume for a second that this story was true. And even if it was, the UN RWA have fired the employees that were suspected. And remember, this is on the word of the IDF. Those 12 employees make up, guess how much? 0.04% of the organization. Does it make sense to stop funding an aid organization, the most critical aid organization may we mention, operating in Gaza because of the actions of 0.04% of its employees who have been fired anyway. This is particularly ironic coming from the United States as journalist Craig Murray points out where 32% of the population have criminal records. Understanding this story properly requires appreciating that not just how convenient the timing of the story is but also Israel's plans to starve the Gazans and force them to leave. For days now, Israeli settlers have organized protests to block aid trucks getting into Gaza. Aid trucks. These protests have been publicly endorsed by none other than Itamar ben Gvir. And instead of owning up and dealing with the gravity of the ICJ ruling, a host of Western states, including the UK and Canada, have joined in condemning the UNRWA and likewise withdrawing their funding. Here are some important questions though. Why is it that the US stops funding crucial aid to Gaza based on the accusations of the IDF that 0.04% of the UNRWA employees were involved in the October the 7th attacks whilst agreeing to send more weapons to the Israelis that the ICJ say 
are potentially or plausibly could be committing genocide? Why does the US insist on helping support Israel to starve the Gazan people? Remember, it was the US that used its position on the United Nations Security Council to gut a resolution for quicker aid delivery to Gaza. The ICJ ruled that more aid should be allowed to get to the Gazans who are currently starving and displaced. Has the West collectively decided to turn a blind eye to the ICJ ruling by joining arms in the effort to starve the Gazan population? These moves are cold and callous. They serve to provide the West with cover from the shame of the ICJ ruling by turning people's attention towards the unsubstantiated claims of Israeli interrogators. And for the purposes of providing the West with this media cover, the decision, it appears, has been taken to assist Israel, and some would say to starve the Gazans, who are currently already enduring what is considered, recognized, as the worst currently ongoing humanitarian crisis. If you like our work and you're a fan of everything that we are doing with regards to the news reporting, then do click the subscribe button down below and share our channel with your friends and your family.